create a function that takes a number and then prints one to that number. Um, when I say create a function, what's the first thing I'm going to look for? Yeah. Define. Um, what do you want to call it? What did y'all call it? Count. Count. We'll go with count for right now. And what's it going to take? Num. It's going to take a number. Count and num. And I always forget my colon. So, how many of you used a while loop? And how many used a for loop? It can actually be done either way. Um, I think the while may be a little bit simpler. While. Okay. While what? Yeah, we can we can go ahead and say while num is less than, well, actually while x is less than num, and the problem is we've not defined x yet. You should do less than or equal to. That way it actually There we go. Okay. It'll still work. If you don't, if you don't define x, it still works. Yeah, I did it. I did it where it just, um, while a is less than 30, a equals, a plus 1, and a equals 0. Yeah, because it's going to uh, initialize before you pass 0. Okay, we can try it both ways. For good practice. Yeah, go ahead and initialize it. Uh, it, it's not going to hurt to initialize the thing specifically like that, but, okay. While that... Do what? Well, I started with zero. So I can, uh, there's two different things I've got to do. I've got to say print x. That's easy enough. And what's the other thing that I have to do? Yeah, I have to increment. So x equals x plus one. Does it matter what order I do those in? Thomas has a conviction about it. He says, yes. Why does it matter? Because as it is right now, um, when you first run it, it'll start counting at zero and work its way up. If you were to switch those two, it would start counting at one and work its way up. As yep. far as like what you see. And then when you get done, it would probably, because you're going um, x is less than num and not x is less than or equal to num, then like you have right now, it would go until it's one less than num. If you switch them around, then it would probably go until it's equal to num. Yeah. So there's some art to this, and it really, I'm not going to say there's a right way or a wrong way to it. Just It needs to work, and you need to know what you're doing. What he's saying is right now, it's going to set x equal to zero. Easy enough. It's going to start the loop, and it's going to say zero is less than num. We're going to for right now, assume that, that you're going to put in something less than zero, which means it is going to descend into your loop. It's going to print. What's it going to print in the first iteration? Zero, because we just set x equal to zero, and then it's going to start looping through this and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say our number seven. When this comes through and it says this is going to set to seven, this is not going to be there anymore, so that's going to end up at six. <laughs> Let's try it. Good thing about what we do. I'm going to say count and give it a 7. So it went 0 to 6. Okay. Um, we could do what he was saying and make it put an equal sign there. That would get me the 7, but it's still going to start with 0. So just by swapping these around, uh, x equals x plus one. What? You didn't want to swap them around. You could just set x equal to one. Yeah, I could have done that. I could have said x equal to one, and it still would have worked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Different ways to skin a cat. Um. 
Um, you want to do the for loop version of it? Just for giggles, I'm going to say def. I'm going to say count four. Give it num. Uh, X equals what? You don't really have to initialize it, and it's a little bit more, a little bit more visible. Four, I in, because we want all of them. Range num. Print. I. I will write some bash scripting if you don't watch me. I lost my colon. I told you I did that. Well, yeah, there's my colon. Actually, I lost two of them. Let's see what this does. Well, I didn't use my function, so that was a little anticlimactic. Count four, <coughs> seven. Well, got the same problem. How do I fix it? You do um, four i in range one to num plus one. One, two. No, there's a comma. After one comma. And then num plus one. Num plus one. That worked. I thought that was kind of confusing. Let's try a different method. You could also, uh, you might be able to go ahead and, uh, I was going to say you could probably initialize i uh, beforehand to one, but I don't think that will actually work. Because the for loop, I think, initializes it for you. Yeah. You could say. I think I would have been more proud of your solution, but my solution works too. <clears throat> If it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. Isn't that what they say? Um, if you were coding professionally, there are instances when you would learn more about the language that you're using and, and learn how it declares its variables, how it uses its variables. And uh, again, some of the sets that we use are just millions and millions and millions of records. And if you're opening RAM for each and every one of these, then you can run out of space if you're not if you're not efficient with the way that you use your variables. Um, you can also really slow some stuff down if you don't do it efficiently. Um, we're learning, so for what we're doing, that's fine. So the next step, what if I ask you to sanity check that? What's a sanity check? John's got it. Uh, try and accept. Say it again. Uh, try and accept. accept. You could do a try and accept. That may be a way that we need to handle it. Um, what if I do that? Well, that just confused it. Um, tell you what, um, I won't do that to do a good job of sanity checking. You'd need to do that. Let's just check for positive numbers. That way we can move more quickly on to something else. All right. Take just a minute and do that. Do you know if Python has unsigned versions? I don't know. Thomas may know. I'm not sure. Like an um, unsigned integer? Right. I would... I would say as long as you have something that checks in there to make sure it doesn't go negative, you should be okay. Like, I know when you declare a variable, you can change the variable's type on the fly, whereas other languages you can't.
There you go. There's the t-shirt I wanted. <laughs> now you can laugh along with that. And then fire bar or sapphire or whatever it doesn't wash. That's the punchline. What is it? Uh, uh, the punchline is a customer walks into the bar, asks where the ba bathroom is, and the whole bar catches on fire, killing everybody inside. <laughs> okay, I've not heard that part of it. Yep. This this is a software tester doing sanity checking. Orders a beer. Orders zero beers. Orders nine 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 beer. Orders a lizard. Orders a negative beer. I've been told I would make a good software tester because I'm good at breaking stuff. I have a real flair for destruction. Even that's not as fun as it used to be. It depends on what you run it on. I run it, ran it once, and the system kept running as long as I didn't shut it off. But all, I couldn't use any other apps after that point, like at all. But it kept running as long as everything was in memory. I taught a lot of Linux, and students who want to do that at the end of the year. He's basically saying start at the root of the file system and just start deleting stuff and forcing it and, until you – well, it just crashes the operating system. It's really fun. It actually – but anymore, you just do a snapshot before you do it, and then. Yeah. All right. Let's see how we can. Um, how can we do this? <laughs> Let's Sandy check this first one just a little bit. I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to say if num is less than one, it throws an exception. Break. Will that work? What don't you like about it, Sam? The break function should go under the loop. Otherwise, our He's losing conviction. Let's see. Uh, count seven. Blah, 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 blah. Break outside loop. Oh. You can't break a function. See? We've learned something. We could. Well, it's going to. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Oh. I had break in my head. What should I have put? Return. I could just return a zero, or I can return one. I could return anything. Let's see if that does any better. There we go. Uh, if I say nine, that works. How about if I say negative eight? Yeah, it returned one. When a function or something returns a zero, that usually means okay. And if you have something besides a zero, um, you do a man page for your function and you look and say, okay, one means they did this, two means they did this, three means they did this. So you can get some meaning out of your out of your error. Um. <laughs> Let's take about five minutes. Do that in reverse so that my numbers are backwards. If I give it a five, sure. instead of saying one, two, three, four, five, it says five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. 
I might have made a mistake. How many of you have caused a out of control loop in Python yet? <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Why didn't it run? It did run. It's still running. It's hung. I just tried to write in <laughs> I think when I've done it, you, you know, you get these little execution numbers. If something executes, it gets its number. But if something, if it runs away, you get an asterisk there. Do you want us to count down to zero or not? So no. To one. To one. To one. Count down to one. We don't want no stinking zeros. <laughs> I think it might be the next class after this <coughs> that you do recursion, where a function calls itself. Okay. That's some neat stuff. <laughs> Makes some really efficient code, but you can screw stuff up too. It's no fun if you can't screw stuff up. Well, this is what mine does not much. That's those two. That one and the one below it. Let's give it about two more minutes. I'm making a video for tonight too. That's okay. We'll do that another day. What I was getting at is if uh, you want to see the class videos that we've done, I'm um, smarcus828. If you can remember your area code, <laughs> that's me on uh, YouTube. Um, hey, there's an old video of me teaching. That's embarrassing. No, that's, that's here. That's even more embarrassing. There's a DNS video. DNS client. Some of these are not too bad. I think I cleaned out most of the really garbage ones. Most of them are Linux. But nothing exciting. But anyway, the videos that we do here will wind up there if you want to see them all at one time and not have to dig through Moodle. Um, I'm not going to guarantee that I keep all these. I can't imagine, I think 10 years from now, I'd look and see 12 views. Can't make no money like that. I won't monetize that one. Okay. Dev count. Um, I'm going to put in a number. 
we still don't want a negative number, so I'm going to leave that part of it. So we want to start at the high end, right? We want to start with num, whatever it is. So I'm going to start my counter with num, x equals num, and then say while x is greater than zero, num is going to be my starting point and zero is going to be my ending point. Now I'm going to count down. Da, 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 da. Then I should be able to just do something cute like that. X equals X minus one. Maybe you have to put one because it'll turn out zero also. Well, let's see. If you do that, it'll count. It won't display whatever your count number is. So you have to like go to zero. It went to zero. Oh, so you swap no. The two between after the end of while loop. Put the print. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Everybody okay with what we did? Some of these things you really have to just go line at a time. Okay, I've got a, I feed it an eight. Is num greater, less than one? No, so I'm okay. X is eight, while eight is greater than zero, print eight. Reduce it by one, is seven greater than zero? Just trace through it sometimes is what you have to do. They no shame in it. All right, to jump in to our next section, I will do a little segue here. Right now, the loop is printing something and it's starting a new line every time it does it. Let's take just a minute and see if you can make that print all on one line. There was there was a homework question in that. This actually was in the reading log because when I talked to Dr. Sam today, I'm like, well, this was in some of the stuff, and I don't remember seeing it. And he smiled and he goes, it was. It was, it was like in reading number one. I'm like, okay, I just missed it. Yeah, all on one line. How long do we make our one print line in code? You shouldn't need it too long. If you don't remember reading it, you can do a Google search real quick. I've heard that Google is your friend. Okay. I just heard a light bulb go on. Yeah. Audrey's here, Franklin's here, Lana's here, Harry's here, Thomas is here, Ryan and Ryan. Mark is not here. Oh, wow. Alex is back there, Hunter is here. Um, Travis is here. 
Sam, Hayden, Danya, um, Coles here, Bill's here, Austin's here, John's here, Johan, Haley's, Haley's not here. I have to say, in the programming projects that I've done, I could come up with all the logic, and it's just beautiful, and it does exactly what I wanted. But then, to get it to display on the screen the way I want to, I've taken days. Okay, three spaces here and two spaces here, and, and you sit and tweak it and rerun it and tweak it and rerun it and tweak it and rerun it. And you can bury tons of time. So formatting is not just a joke, is the point of that. <laughs> Let's sidebar for a second. Let's remember our old friend, Print. Print. That's Print, right? Um, a couple of things to go over. Let's go ahead and answer our question first. If I say Print, one, be Print, one, Print, two, Print, just for good measure, print four. That's going to return one, two, three, four. So the way that Python interprets this is it will print one, and implicitly in there, it's inserting that. Mm -hmm. That's that's a new line character. Let's see what it actually does. Ha ha! Check that out. It accepted the new line character. So after I printed the one, there's actually an additional new line character. There's also, remember what the backslash T was? A tab. I think we did cover that. So there, I printed some very ugly stuff. So the question was, how do you back up and print stuff on the same line after it's already gone down the new line? Well, what you can do is and equals that. Now let's see if it does what we want. What the end parameter allows you to do, and look at how I put it in there. There's a comma, and then I'm saying, okay, for, for my end character, which is normally a new line, use nothing. Let's throw a space in there. That might make it better because right now I've got one and two jammed together. There we go. So now one and a space. So let's do this. There we go. One, two, three, four. Easy breezy beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? Okay. Okay, while we're doing this, while we've got this in our heads, let's go back and fix our piece of code. Um, print x, comma, and equals that. Bum, bum, bum. That's got it run together. Somebody wants a space. We'll put a space.
Keep it in 15. Ha ha. You know, just for meanness, let's do that. Let's see what it does. Let's do a billion. That's the way you learn, though, doing silly stuff like that. Um, what can I put in here? How about if I put chicken in there? I'm replacing my in character with the word chicken. Awesome. So you can see that you can monkey with this to get it to do what you want it to do. Um, we could take this further, and if we have time, we can do this. What if we wanted rows of three, if we wanted three columns? You could set a little counter and say, one, two, three, if, gra if greater than three, print a new line. Boop. Do, do, do. That might be fun to do if your definition of fun is pretty loose. Um, so there's that. There's another one that you need to know about. We've got end. I'm going to say a equals one. Oh, let's continue on with the chickens. Chicken b equals llama c equals iguana d equals what do you want? Platypus. You got to spell it right. P L A. Platypus. And I think it's P L A T Y P U S. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Print A B C. Let's learn my alphabet. C D. What's that going to do? Now remember the print statement. We spent a lot of time saying, okay, if you've got an, well, these are all strings. If you've got an integer, sometimes we had to convert it to a string or a float, we had to convert to a string. If you had a string before it saying the answer is, these are all strings. It actually put a space in between them for us. So we have chicken, llama, iguana, platypus. You had an option to separate with SEP equals. How about that? So by default, your separator is just a space. We saw that to begin with. I made my separator BBB. So it crammed them all together. I don't have spaces anymore. I replaced my space with what I put in there for a separator. That makes a little bit more sense. That should put a space on either side of my words. So now I have chicken BBB, llama BBB, iguana BBB, platypus. Notice the separator doesn't go at the beginning at the end. It's just, it separates your items. What if we said print A plus D? What does this do? We got to vote for chicken platypus. Chicken platypus. So, to pull a dirty trick on you, A equals 7, B equals 12. Print A plus B. What am I going to get when I, when I hit enter? 
there are no quotes anywhere in that little piece of code. So A is just a, is a numerical seven. It's an integer seven. And B is the integer 12. So if I wanted to trick you, I could do something like this. They know chickens in there. A is a string seven and B is a string 12. So when you put them together, I've effectively done the same thing I've done up here. That's called concatenation when you cram two things together. I've concatenated those two strings and printed them out. Um, <laughs> um, mark down. Create a function that takes a string, one, two, three, or four, and returns a numeric one, or two, or three, or four. If I send it an O-N-E, it's going to return the, character, the one. Yeah, and we're just going to go through one through four so that you're not just sitting typing forever. Now look at look at how I've asked it. The two keywords, it's a function. So what am I definitely going to have on the very first line? Yeah. Death. What am I going to have on near the end? A return. So those are your keywords to look for. Let's take about let's take about ten minutes to do that and you can take a break while you're at it. I've not been doing a good job of giving you a break at the top of the hour. I'm a slave driver. Sorry, I do that a lot. Sorry, I do that.
streaming rules. <coughs> Wait a minute. Is this supposed to pick up a stream? Mm hmm. Oh. Let's see if this helps. A one, two, three, or four. Oops. There we go. How did that wind up being so big? Well, that's okay. Let's give it about two more minutes. Yes, it does. Oh, toppings picked. That's funny. I try to give you some something from uh, from computer geekery in general each week, um, since this is your first level class. Who doesn't know what Reddit is? Everybody know what Reddit is? You do know or you don't know? Okay. Reddit is pretty much just a big bunch of everything. What well, they call it, the front page of the, the internet. 
There's a bunch of good stuff. There's a bunch of bad stuff. Watch your step. Um, I like data is beautiful. Uh, you can you can waste some time here. Um, and I show this to you because you may, may want to pick this as a career field. Uh, data artist is a job, a, a job that's only been in existence for a few years. But people that can present data quickly, you know, and some of this stuff you'll just sit and stare at like, oh, that's so neat. Um, this one, this one's neat. It's it's how fast a, a dude has typed over three years. 300 words per minute is insane. Yeah, that's insane. But you're interested in this just because it's it's pretty and, and you know, you're watching it. But you can look through, oh gosh. <laughs> But there's more to this than just. <laughs> there's more to this than just wasting time. It's neat the way that they're presenting some of the data, and you can look at some of the tools like Grafana, and and different different tools are presenting data. These things are neat. I hadn't seen them before. That's not a good one. But there's more than just bar charts. And people are doing some really cool stuff with with huge amounts of data. In the last six, seven years, we have access to just huge amounts of data. Um, and we have more and more devices. Your refrigerator now can can pump data into the to the internet. So data is beautiful. Oh, we gotta stop for that one. Georgia obesity by county. That's got to be a winner. All right, so something different to look at on Reddit. Let's create our function. Define, um, what'd you call it? Transform. Kind of fancy. Here we go. I'm going to say INP for input. And use my colon. We're feeding it the one, two, or three. So I'm going to say, how do, how do we set it up? What are you using? Do you need a loop? You really don't need a loop. On the instructions that I've got, you need a handful of if statements, right? He can be more complicated if he wants to be complicated. I'm going to say if input equals one return one anybody gonna call me on that <coughs> yep need two equals this is all part of the same thing so I'm gonna do elif you actually could get by with if in this instance Input, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do it this way. Return two. Now, if you're going to do these with if, elif, 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 you really need an else. Return negative one. That way we can catch errors. Let's make something that calls it print transform three what do we think I don't see something fourth one you put IMP oh, he caught my typo I'm 
That's not right. I'm typing in the wrong end of it, aren't I? Three. Blah, 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 blah. What blew up? Three, the T-H-R-E-E -E needs to be a string. What did it take it as? It's taken it as a variable that's not defined. So it looked, three doesn't point to anything. So that worked. One, one. And we already found that if I do something that it doesn't expect or that's out of bounds, out of bounds data. There's you another good term. If you give it data that's out of bounds, you need to control it. I got a couple more. How about we jump into the uh, homework? That's not what I wanted. That's it. But a program prompts the user to enter a number until the user enters done. Once the user enters done, the program should print the average of the numbers entered. Okay, what it's missing is the word function. I'm not writing a function, I'm just writing a program. Does somebody close their door? Okay. Okay. I thought somebody outside had closed it. I was about to be offended. After the movies we have to listen to. Um, I've already forgot what we're doing. Oh yeah, we're going to enter numbers until somebody enters done and then it's going to print the average. So we need to set up a can't do a for loop because we don't know how many numbers are going to be entered. It's just going to enter them until they enter done. So what kind of loop do we need? A while loop. While um, input not equal done. Colon. Now the problem with this so far, I've actually used INP up in code earlier. Um, it, we would call it undefined. We don't know what it is. So let's monkey with this. We're going to say imp equals input enter a number space Not equal done. Print. Will that run? Yeah. I don't see any egregious errors. Enter a number four. Ooh, okay. <laughs> this is it. I've made this is my example. What's it doing? Yep. I just headed toward infinity. Notice my little asterisk right there to tell me that I've I've crashed the boat. So I'm gonna to have to say stop. Interrupting kernel. And let's fix it. Um <laughs> My goal was to write a little bit of code and test it. Well, I didn't write enough code. So let's keep going. Um, input equals number. And then what? Something's broke. I've got to ask my question over and over again. So where does my question need to be? My question needs to be inside my loop. 
Otherwise, I'm going to be writing my question over and over and over again. So I'm going to say, wipe that out. Um, there we go. I heard the answer. Somebody said it. We basically, we're going to break. When, when it hits done, we're going to break out of this loop, right? So it's okay to do this. Remember we talked about it. It's okay to just jam this thing open while true. That's going to start our loop. Now, before we run this, we've got to put a break in here. I'm going to enter a number. Let's go ahead and, and say if um, INP equals equals done break. Otherwise, it's going to print it and then loop back up again. So we should have a way out of this loop now, correct? Franklin doesn't like it. Your print is indented one too far. What would that matter? Franklin points out that my print is indented too far. Yeah, it thinks it's a part of this if statement that's above it. So it needs to be, eh. Now my if is just break, and my print is going to loop every time. Is it going to be endless? It's going to enter a number, input, loop back up, and enter another number. I've got high hopes for it. Let's try them. Enter a number six, enter a number nine, zero, six. All right, let's type it in. Done. Ba -bong. All right, we've got functional code now. So now we just have to add our logic to figure it out. So we need two things. We need a running total, and we need a count of how many times we've done this. So... Total equals zero, count equals zero. I created two variables and I've initialized them, is your terminology, to zero. Okay, we've got our break. I can print it out. Let's just come on down here. Count equals count. There, the movie started. Won't they ever do Forrest Gump? Okay, I'm sorry. If they ever do Forrest Gump, we're going to do a field trip and go watch Forrest Gump because that's my favorite. All right, count equals count plus one. Are we okay starting with zero? Yeah, because it's not going to increment if it breaks. <laughs> that last run through... We need to put our stuff up here, don't we? I think this needs to be the last thing because if it breaks, we're not going to have an opportunity. We can do our average at the end. Count equals count plus one. Let's keep going. I'll wreck the train. I don't care. Total equals... Plus, plus what, Franklin? Plus INP. But an easier way to do it would be plus equals. Plus Instead equals INP? Total plus INP. Like that? Yep. What do we think about that syntax? might be a little bit harder to read, but if, if we know it's coming, we're okay with it. This is some of the stuff that you do in like C++, and Python's just borrowing from it. And you can do the same with your count statement. Could do the same thing with my count, but we'll stick it in there just for Franklin. Okay, so this is going to do us a, give us a running total. Ah, he's caught it. What is he saying? I'm trying to add a string to a 
to a number. That doesn't work, does it? No. I'm going to have to top cast this. Because right here, I'm taking in a string. We know the input is going to return a string. So I'm going to take that string, convert it to an integer, and poke it into total. Once my loop is finished, I can say average, a new variable, equals total divided by count print the average is plus average. And I had to convert my average back to a string because I've, I put some pretty text there. Enter a number three, four, five, done. What should the average of three, four, and five be? Four. Average is 4.0. Gave me a float. I'm going to comment this out because it's taking up too much room. How do I comment something out? Pound it out. Let's see if we can get a... Um, can get a float. Three, four, five, six. The average is going to be four and a half. Done. Four and a half. What do we think? Okay, just took it a step at a time. Um, Modify your program so that the user enters an unrecognized string, it prints a message, and continues to prompt the user. What were the things that we used in a loop for control? We've seen break. What was the other one? Continue. Break would drop you to the bottom of your loop and keep going. Continue, what did it do? It skipped the rest of the content of your loop and took you back to the top again. So, how can we put this in here? Um, how are we going to do it? Somebody said top check. If I'm thinking this is the way I did it. Do what? Oh, don't have a way to connect. And what were you saying? You like it here better? If you're right, I see what you're saying now because I, I couldn't get past it. Float INP. Okay, so I've handled my done first. So if float INP colon print. This needs to be an int or time. And then what's my next line? I printed out my message and then I want to go back to the top again, so continue. All right, I wrote a bunch of code. Let's see how this works. Musical knot, awesome. Can we do requests? Three, let's make sure I didn't just break it. Four, five, oops. Uh, 
actually, I needed to do that. How about that? If not, if you can't convert that into an input, I had it to say, if I put in a four, yeah, that converts to a float just fine. Run him again. Run him again. I made a runaway loop. Boop. If you what now? <coughs> okay. So that getting away from us, we could do the the try. I should have printed this out. Does anybody else find that terribly distracting? It must be film or something. Let's try something stupid. Try float. Continue. I think this is wrong. Yep. Do what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying now. Try if float input break, and then I needed accept. Okay, that needed to be there. Nope, that ARF too. But it, okay. I don't remember it being this complicated. It should fail. It did let me convert it. I still think this is the way I did it. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. <coughs> Try float. Man, don't you hate it when this happens. I need to move my accept. Got another runaway. <coughs> right there's where it should crash.
Do what? I got to do this. Boop. Yeah, I screwed that up. Okay, that was a train wreck. <laughs> Let's take a look at this piece of code now. I did. Started my counters here. What I needed was something that would break. I do my input. If my input is done, then I break and I drop completely out. This is the thing that I put in to make it break. If I write in chicken, there's no way to convert chicken to a float. So if this fails, it, it's going to splatter a big error. So this is going to catch it. If I put in a four, it's not a big deal. I don't have anything catching this. I'm just saying, is this going to execute correctly? If it executes correctly, it continues on, does my counts. So if this does crash, then I get my exception, and it tells me this needs to be entered done and continue. And this should crash and skip this piece of code, which would screw up my counters. Let's test it again. Three, four, five, six done four and a half so the math does work what are we pointing to I question. question I'm sorry oh, yeah. so is there any stuff that's this complicated on the test maybe not quite this complicated you normally want your homework to be a little bit more a little bit more harder than your test All right, yeah, we got time. Function name pop that models the population of a town. The function should have the following parameters. Start, percent growth, move in, and end pop. Population of the town is initially start pop. Each of the population increases by percent growth. And an additional move in to town. This is one of those that's actually, I think, easier than what it looks like. We ready? We can do it. We got through that first one. All right. What are our keywords right here? Write a function. Boom. So I know this is function. And it's going to take start pop, percent growth, move in, and end pop. So I've got four parameters. Define pop start pop what was my second one percent growth perk growth move in <coughs> tell you what just because I can I'm going to throw some spaces in there there's my function. That's the prototype for my function. I've got the name of it and I've got four parameters coming in. Okay. Population town is initially start population. Each year the population increases by percent growth and an additional move in, people move to the town. The function should return the number of years it takes for the population to be greater or equal to in population. And he gives you an example here. All right. So I'm going to say while. i got to come up with a, a variable to begin with, right? Um, what's going to be our total? 
that's going to be our years. Years equals zero to begin with. And I'm going to say while start population is, we could just do population. That's actually, I'm going to do that. I've set up another variable. Population is going to catch. I could have used start pop and just screwed up that variable and say it's okay. I'm going to do population. I'm going to say while population is less than end pop I'm going to say population plus equals population equals population plus tell you what let's do it this way population equals <coughs> population times percent growth now what's funky about this how do you get like if I want 10% growth how do I get the number plus 10% how does the math work on that I know 10% is 0.1 0.1 but if I say population times 0.1 if I start off with 10 what's that going to give me that's going to give me 1 so I need to say population equals population times 1.1. And that would give me that. So for right now, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to enter percent growth as one point something. And that's how I'm going to test it. So just take that as a given while we're testing. All right. So now population has figured in the percent growth. It also needs to population equals population plus move in. So that's pretty well all the math that I have to do. What else do I need to do? Yeah, I've got to increment. Let's see. Years equals years plus one. And then it's going to loop. Is this going to be a runaway? Do I have anything to stop it from being a runaway? Well, population. If population ever grows greater than the end population, it will. Is my population going to grow? Yeah, it's going to grow by a certain percent, and it's also going to get a move in. Years equals years plus one. For sake of argument, I think if I put a negative percent growth, it would take it, and then that would make it a run on. Yeah, we, we can start the argument for error for sanity checking. Pop. Um, 1.1. 1. <laughs> um, you have to reference uh, Zillow for that. Okay, so this isn't beautiful, but it should work population that and that is going to return what uh -huh. it's returning nothing 
it's frankly, it's going to return nothing. I don't have a return statement anywhere. So I don't want it to be part of my while loop. I don't want it returning something every time that thing loops. <coughs> return what? What am I returning? Years. There we go. So uh, I'm not going to say print population. It'll, it'll, it'll spit it out to the screen. Let's pull the switch on this. 32 years. It's not right? Well, he gives you test variables in here. Let's say 1,010, 5, 1,300. 1,000, 10, 5, 1,300. 35. Woo-woo. Going ten percent year, per year. So, what kind of problem do we have? Bum bum bum. Does that make sense? I never. What do you say, John? Okay, so what has happened? Let's look at our error and try to learn something from it. 35 makes sense if you started from zero. Yeah. And it, sh it would have failed entirely if we didn't have move in value. It would have sat there and spun because 1.10% of nothing. Yeah. So let's fix it. How do I fix it? You put population equal to There we go. That looks more better. Now, I'm going to go back and fix my percentage because somebody's not going to put in 1.1 for a percentage rate. So how do I fix that? I'm probably going to put in here a 10, right? For 10%. So to get my percent growth, do population times one plus percent of over a hundred. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You didn't say that's, that's, that's not going to work. I, I did it quite a bit differently. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. I am not a math person. I was one of the very few English people that tried to work my way through computer science. Bum, bum, bum. I crashed it. Put the plus one inside. Yeah. There we go. I actually needed more parentheses. That one wasn't too bad. Okay, we got just a few minutes for this last one. It is extended parameters to the prime function of a billion. Print error return none. Okay, we can do it. We can do it. What's a prime number? Number that's only divisible by one in itself. Is 20 a prime number? No, no because 4 times 5 equals 20. Is 11 a prime number? Yes. Yes. Okay. You have come to the end of my math knowledge. Is prime accepts an integer as a parameter, and it's just going to return true or false. It's a function, right? So define it. Let's swing at this again. Is prime. Can't use input. INP. 
going to take input. How do we determine if something is prime or not? So we've got to go through, and the only way to do this is really to brute force it. So, um, while, um, x, we'll say, is less than, we can say, okay, is... We're going to use the modulus operator, right? We're going to use modulus and look for a zero remainder. If I take 20 and divide it by 5, I get 4 without a remainder. That's what I'm looking for. Um, let's skip ahead of that real quick. This is going to be a nested loop, isn't it? We're going to say... INP modulus X equal equal zero. If if it is not prime. Return false. <coughs> Otherwise, carry on. X equals X plus 1. And how long do we do this? While X is less than input. Let's look at this logic. And then, if else, return true. Now, the what do we think of this? One way to screw this up would be to put the return here. That way it's going to return true or false each time. I only want a true is if it goes all the way through this and makes it out to the other end if it's looped through all of it. Now, we've still not accounted for the, the goofy condition, but let's give it a shot. Eleven should return true, correct? Because it's a prime number. Never initialized X, did I? Do we, does the error make sense? Read your errors. That's one thing that you, you need to get used to. Local variable X referenced before assignment. So that tells me what my goof is. So the first thing I need to do is say X equals zero. Okay. So that makes sense. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, X can't be a zero. X is going to have to be at least one. False. Do what? It's going to divide every number by one to start and every number by one. Do, 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 do.
True. If we start x with 2, let's do is is prime 12. False. Is prime 3. So what was goofy was I had to start off my x. 1 is really not valid. 1 and 2. But if we start it with, with 2, it actually works. If a non-numeric value is entered, the function should print an error message and return none. We're out of time, but how would you do that? We could do try and accept. Try and accept. Go back up here and look at this try and accept. Try to turn it into a float, and that would do it. Um, between now and next time, the format of the test will be, I'll give you a handout and there'll be some a written part to it that lasts as much as 15 minutes. I got a feeling most of you will scratch down the answers in about five. It's not hard. Just know the format of how things work. Um, then you'll have the next 70 minutes, whatever time's left, to do the code part. You'll do the code part in this, and you will submit it through uh, Moodle. I'll have an input for Moodle. Is there one question, or is there question? It's multiple. Um, remember coding bat. Are they pulled from that website? Coding bat Python. There's actually a link in Moodle. If you do the logic, work through the logic problem. That's one of the things you can do. All right, I'm going to do that. All righty. Uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow.